Hey guys, uh, so got all got some parts to put an overdrive together. I didn't get a parts to put both two together, so I'm just gonna do the parts that I have to put one together for you guys. Um, so if you haven't watched the teardown video of, yeah, so pulling apart a 46RE, 47RE, and 48RE, there might be more transmissions that are identical to this. I'm just not sure off the top of my head, um, but I know those ones are the same, or basically the same. So this is a 47, you can tell um, by the five gear planetary. <clears throat> I believe that the the only difference between this one and the 48 is the planetary and then um, so the planetary and then the sun gear I believe is the only two differences could be wrong on that though so don't quote me on that I'm pretty sure it is so putting this thing together I've already cleaned everything and kind of lube some stuff up just so it doesn't take take us too long. Whoa. Take us too long. Um, you know, I don't want the video to be too long. So I checked the bushings down inside here. I've already greased them. I checked the bushings. The bushings were still perfect. I actually mic'd them or uh, um, dial bore gauged them. And there was nothing wrong with the bushings. So I'm not going to replace the bushings because there isn't anything wrong with them. And that bottom one does not look like a very good time to pull out. I do have a little puller. It would probably do it, but I don't want to uh, screw around for no reason when I don't have to. Um, so something that you do want to check. Um, well, let's go with this. So Sprag, I bought a new Sprag for it. Um, and then the housing, there wasn't anything wrong with it. Everything was good. This only goes on one way, so you don't have to worry about screwing it up. I just put some of the... This is actually uh, transmission assembly lube. There's a bunch of different... That's a brand that I, I bought um, for you guys that want to know. I'll put a link down in the description if I can find two if you want. Um, so bushings lube down. I put some lube on there just because I didn't want it to be dry. I did scotch bright inside there. All the surfaces that, that have material that, or something that runs on, I scotch braided um, just so everything's good and clean. So pretty simple as far as that goes. This part anyway. So take the sprag assembly. And what I do is just stuff my two fingers in there so you don't drop it. And just spread your fingers. And well, this doesn't fight me. It should go down in there, just like so. So that's that easy. Now, if you had to change those bushings, um, you know that'll be another video. Maybe doing some bushings. My the input shaft that I have for my truck or for my transmission is um, brand new, so it has the bushings in it already. Um, so I just, you know, it's one of those things. If there's nothing wrong with the bushings, I'm not going to change them. There's literally, it's not a bearing. If it was a Torrington bearing or a roller bearing or something, um, I would change it myself personally. But just depends on how much money you got to spend and all the good things. So now we got that in there. I'm just going to put that over the side. Um, now something that I have done this and not replaced it before. So I can't say that I always replace it. Um, but if you look... A screwdriver no. if you look right here see how there's like there's wear in this here's the new one and these things weren't that expensive i'll link the part numbers and stuff down in the description at some point so replace that this is this goes on to your sun gear but literally it's pretty easy to put on you just have to work it on there there we go and then put the snap ring back in now I do have, um, for doing this, I have these pliers, which are like a, an, an external snap ring plier. Yeah, an external snap ring plier set. These are snap-ons. If you want to buy a set, I'm sure you can probably buy other ones, but I don't know if you guys would be able to. The part number is SRP2. So for doing these things, um, I personally would recommend it. But, and because they're not that, they're still not even a good time to put on because the snap ring does not have, there might even be a real, like an actual special tool for doing it. If there is, I know in the description, because I'd buy one if there is, but it is what it is. Not that bad to do, I don't think. And then you just want to make sure that snap ring set in there properly and way, way better. Now, this Torrington bearing goes on top of that, new bearing. Um, something I always do, I don't know if you have to, but being that this has no oil on it, I always put a little bit of ATF fluid down inside those tabs. 
and I always do um, You know what? I forgot a part. That was my fault. I'm glad that I know. Yeah. So I always put that. This is the same way it came apart. It's I don't know if it makes a difference, but you can see that side's closed and this side's open. I don't know if they do that for lubrication. Eh, not sure on that one. Uh, but something I did forget. Now that I'm looking at it, getting ahead of myself. Now that I got to take this back out, that's gonna suck. Hold on a sec. Feels like lubed it in there, gooped it in. Oh, come on. Okay, that wasn't so bad. You have to, that's probably why it was fighting me. Uh, yeah, it's with this bearing in there and it goes in, in below. So basically it sits like that on there and I forgot to put it in. So I'm glad that I noticed that because I would have to take it back apart again. And I goop this stuff up so it doesn't fall apart. That's part of the reason that I do that. Get ahead of myself. It's all right, as long as you catch yourself before you get it all together, not such a big deal. Okay, so anyways, I got that together. You do, I would replace, like I said, the Torrington bearings, I would replace personally. They're not horribly expensive. I would replace them. Um, so, next in the scenario here oh, is planetary. Now these, I there again, I've checked to make sure that the end play is good. There's no funky business. I lube these up. I've already lubed it. It's been sitting for a while already. Something else when you're starting this, you always want to soak your clutches. That's what's inside here. They've been soaking for a few hours. I've already lubed that once. So then you're going to put your... Planetary in there. Planetary in. And then you have your sun gear. And if you put a little bit, that's one thing with this stuff is it's super tacky. So if you put some of this on there, it will hold that bearing for you from falling off. So all that movie, movie. Um, so at this point, your spring sits on there because that's what that bearing and plate does. And then you can put this on. Oh, something else I wanted to mention too, I didn't show up, is these have holes in them. There's just a bunch of different holes in them. One right there. I wanna make sure those holes are, are clean um, there's no debris in, especially if the transmission self-destructed. You want to make sure there's no debris inside there. So anyways, your killer spring. Put that on there. Actually, what I didn't do is I always put a little lube in those. I just put a little lube down on that because it tends not to stick that way. So now that we got that all turny turny in there, and the reason that that is such a pain when you're putting it together is that the spring doesn't sit perfect. So that's the reason that sometimes it kind of goes cockeyed on you. You just want to watch that. So, um, I think what we're going to do, I don't know, I've done this a couple different ways. You can press this down to load that in in there, and then you can put the clutches in afterwards. Um, but anyways, we're going to do it like this. So, you have your um, plate that goes down inside there. Now, there is a, a ridge there, and that needs to go down. Otherwise, you don't have enough room to get all these in there. If these pleats are screwed up at all, I just scotch braided them a little bit. Um, you want need to You need to fix that. But, um, so take the clutches. Now, like I said, they've been soaking. Test them all. Get them all. And these ones are uh, GBZ, I think. Uh, the Robe Robestus 
but I guess they're just the regular ones. Apparently, like for the most part, uh, usually the overdrive direct, which are these, um, are not screwed up. So, um, so you just have to alternate back and forth. Clutch steel, clutch steel, clutch steel. You should never have two steels surfaces touching each other. Not too difficult to do. You are gonna get covered in transmission fluid. At least I always do. Wait. Now you do wanna line these up because it is, I think, for the two seconds it takes to line them up. Okay, more remember in two seconds, but less than a minute to line them up. It'll make it easier later. Okay, so something else that you need to do. So I have the new snap ring. You always want to replace that snap ring. Um, I've seen it broke, well, usually they're broken, and then this is the little wire one. Um, but something that I need to do is I need to put an uh, intermediate shaft in there. So if you guys are doing this all the time, you probably want to have an intermediate shaft to, or an intermediate shaft cut down. Think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go hack that off and I'm gonna be right back so when we come back we'll be over at the press I'm gonna hack this off uh, this is one that's no good anyway so we'll have there is a problem there is a tool that you can do and just that I have an input shaft so I'm not gonna buy a tool when I have an input shaft which is exactly the same thing so when we come back we'll be over at the press all right guys so we're gonna get the press in this thing you want to be careful I'm um, using a big press. You want to get be careful that you don't um, it doesn't get bound up inside there. Because this thing does need to move. deal there so this snap ring in this is the one that you want to make sure you replace this is a new one those like to break you got that in there good and you gotta put this little guy in here you're down far enough You gotta do put that up. Make sure everything's seated properly. Oh, actually, I think. That's all she's wrote for putting her back together. Shut this thing off. Move you guys over here just quick. Uh. 
So, and then all we gotta do is pull this shaft out of there, which I'm not gonna do right now, just because my hands are slippery and it doesn't wanna pull out that easy. But I know that's not really stuck in there, it's just sitting there, basically. Actually, even if I tap it with a hammer, it'll probably come out. Well, it should come out of there, it will. But anyways, that's the reason that they usually have a little snout. Usually these have like a little, maybe I'll actually chuck it in the lathe and turn it down. Then you can use a little pry bar to pry it out. But anyways, that's all there is to put an overdrive unit together. Um, not really rocket science. You're not, usually these don't have a lot of problems. You just want to make sure you place those couple parts, those torrenting, bear, torrenting bearings that are in there. Uh, you know, a little lube, make sure. Um, oh, I, I replaced the sprag. I don't know. that The original sprag in it didn't look bad. So you probably could have got away with not changing it. One of those things, I guess. Anyways, that's what it takes to do that. Um, we'll get into doing, um, I basically have all the tranny parts except for a couple little things uh, for my transmission. We might actually work on Chase a little bit. Tomorrow, I got some other stuff. I got some parts and stuff that showed up for the shorty. And uh, so we'll be probably doing a little work on that. And then I got some actual shop business stuff to do tomorrow as well. But anyways, catch you guys tomorrow. Uh, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. It does make a difference to me and to the uh, um, YouTube algorithm. If you like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Catch us on the next one. Thanks, guys.